Hey, today I have the pleasure to host Neme Tomi. He is a data and AI strategist at Databricks. And if I'm not wrong, he's also the person behind an awesome tool called Casal, which literally means lazy in Arabic. Neme, can you tell us more about you and how you're going to make us lazy? Thank you. Pleasure mine, Yusuf. Indeed, Casal is um, a word in Arabic that also meant uh, lazy and Kassel is is helping us to be uh, to be able to to build agents in a low code no code approach. So imagine yourself as um, a persona that is uh, non technical in terms of uh, you you don't know how to write code and you want to be able to build agents in a short period of time to be able to provide value. Imagine a persona that wants to do a research on a particular topic and wants to be able to create the agents that would do the research. Now that data could be data that is coming from our uh, Genie solution. It could be a data coming from our agent brick solution, or it could be some external data, be it APIs that are available, or be it information that are from the internet through search engines. Then such a persona would be able to, in a no-code, low-code approach, prompt that solution and would be able to create several sequence of steps that would be gathering that data, resonating that data, and then producing different artifacts, be it dashboards, be it sending emails, be it connecting and doing different things before doing the action. So just to summarize, Casal is a low-code, no-code solution to build agents. So you're literally saying that in addition to the Databricks 1, where we can democratize access to AI, BI, dashboard, Genie, and apps, we're also having another solution called Casal that will help us build agents quickly. Correct. So so Casal um, is, a, is a Databricks Labs porn project. So it is a part of the field engineering team. We were building the solution that allows us to deploy Casal in Databricks apps. And within the Databricks apps, we are able to have the authentication authorization where we're able to connect to the different resources in Databricks without having to basically run and and, uh, and do the code. So the, the difference between uh, Databricks 1, where you're able to access dashboards, be able to do text to SQL in order to gather that different data, think of it as you're building agents where you're giving them a goal. They have to go and then fetch different things, identify, for instance, the most effective campaign. After they gather those campaigns, they want to be able to communicate those results to the brand manager and then afterwards gather these different documents and be able to consolidate them, extract some information from them and then do a next action. So whenever you do have several steps that have to happen that integrates with your overall ecosystem, that, that is really a good use case where you could leverage Casal. And how can I deploy Casal in my workspace? So actually, let me share my screen and I'll, I'll walk you through how you'd be able to deploy Casal. So there in, at, at Casal, you could go to the Databricks Marketplace. In the Marketplace, you would search for Casal. And once you find Casal with a point and click, you'd be able to deploy Casal in your environment. So that installation mainly will allow you to, within just that simple uh, uh, point and click, you will have the Casal within the environment. But since this is installed within the Databricks apps, whenever you want to access uh, the, the Casal itself, you will be able to see it available within the, the apps. So if you go to the compute, then to the apps, you go filter your own apps, you would be able then to see that the CASAL market, that is the one where just, we just triggered. So I have another CASAL deployment here where I'd be able to click on the link. And notice here, I didn't really uh, require to, do, to, to be redirected to any login page. This is because I am already logged into my environment. Now that means that while you're in Castle, everything that you are able to do on the uh, data that is available within the Databricks environment, Castle will be able to do that. Everything that you cannot, the tables that you don't have access to, then your agent won't be able to, to do that. That means also in a multi-tenancy, there might be some other users that have access to the data. With Castle, they would be able to have access, but you won't be able to do that. How you would be able to create agents. So in this assistant on the right side, you could see that you could say something like create a marketing a strategist agent. So that one single prompt is creating one agent for you. 
Now think of it as, yes, this might be your digital FTE that you want to give it different tasks that it has to uh, uh, do. It could be going and gathering data from external sources or from Genie, from our TextSQL solution. So for instance, if I would say here, create a task that will identify the most effective campaign from the past three months, that one particular prompt is going to create that task for me. And think of it as you would be able to create one or many agents, one or many tasks within that agent. And the moment you have a plan that you believe that this is what you would like to have, then you'd be able to trigger that run. So this is what this example that I just showed you was creating one marketing strategist that does the campaign effectiveness. But if I could actually start here in a new canvas, I would even give it one prompt that says, create a plan that will gather the most effective marketing campaign and create a presentation from it. So for the sake of time here, I will say maximum two agents and two tasks. So this is rather than creating one agent and one uh, task at a time, you, you just create a whole, an entire plan where it will be multiple agents, multiple tasks that will uh, go to your marketing tables, gather all the most effective campaigns, and then in the end, create a presentation for you. You could see it, see, say you want to create a dashboard, you want to create a presentation, or you want to send an email that would be following the, that same pattern. So here, what I've done is I was able to, to create that plan. Now I'm able to assign the tools to this plan. The tools here could be some something like the external source like perplexity or sure. being able to call Genie. Now, when I call Genie, I would be able to select my Genie space. So here I would be able to specify the Genie room that I want. Once I specify, I could, up before starting the call, go back to Genie, validate that this is the right room. Those were the questions that um, that room is able to, to, to answer. And then in the end, once you validate that, you say, yes, this is the room, you save it, and then you trigger this run. So while you trigger this run, there's this concept of workspaces where you could have a workspace for marketing, workspace for engineering, for go-to-market. So here, for instance, I have a, a workspace that is for marketing that I am a member of. And the moment I changed workspaces, I could see all the queries that have been done by either myself or the people part of the workspace. So if I look here, I have a marketing campaign analyst dashboard that got created. If I look at the trace, I could see that this was a brand manager that was mainly trying to identify the cost and uh, number of leads generated. And that was the query going towards Genie. And Genie replied back with that particular answer. Now that answer went to a, an input to another agent that was visualizing that content in, in a nice dashboard. So if I want to look at the result, I'll be able to open the dashboard and then I see that dashboard that is created from that Genie query that came back from the first agent. So this is something that I might be happy with. I might want to uh, say, no, I want to be able to iterate on it. As a, as a non-developer uh, persona, I would be able to easily iterate through on it by uh, specifying, well, this is not enough. I want to be able to change the content out of it and then rerun it easily. And the moment I'm happy with it, I go ahead and I can save it and I say, this is the marketing dashboard. And the moment you save it, other members would be able to go on the catalog and then pull on, pull in that plan that you've been you've been creating for that. That's that's amazing. And I think I think thanks to you, I'll be adding uh, Asian developer in my LinkedIn profile. That's a short summary. This video is part of a series that will go and deep dive in every single component of Castle to make you an expert or uh, an agent machine. So. Stay tuned. Looking forward to it.